In today's video, we will understand how to use Spring Retry project to implement retry logic in our application without writing custom logic for performing retries in case of failure. Suppose we are performing some operation in an application which, if fails, we want to perform it again for some fixed number of times, such as while fetching a value from database, we might want to retry for database connection if we don't get it first time. For writing a value or socket, we have to acquire socket connection first. If we are not able to connect, then we want to try a fixed number of times. Let's jump into code and look how we will implement it without and with Spring Retry. This is a Spring Boot project. Let's create a new class and a method that will contain retry logic. Suppose we want to hit a REST endpoint and fetch some data. For this, we will use Spring's REST template class. Create an object of REST template and use its get for object method to fetch data from a remote endpoint. This URL is fake so that it will raise an error and requires a retry. Typically, if we want to handle a retry logic, then what we would do is define a for loop with required number of retries. Let's say 5 and put this code inside loop. Then enclose the logic we want to retry with try catch block so that if any exception arises, then also the loop doesn't terminate. This code although works but is not flexible enough, such as you cannot add a delay between retries without adding thread.sleep. You cannot increase the delay dynamically between retries without writing another logic for that. You cannot define maximum retry time and much more. In this video, we will understand how you can add retry logic without writing any code, even a loop or try catch block using Spring Retry project. Before moving further, do not forget to subscribe the channel to keep receiving latest video updates. First, you need to add Spring Retry dependencies to your project. These are the two dependencies required. Since Spring Retry uses AOP or aspect oriented programming behind the scenes, we also need this dependency. These dependencies are defined in Gradle. If you are using Maven in your project, then you can find the corresponding dependencies. Once you add these dependencies, then you can add retry mechanism by using annotations. There are two main annotations for this. First is enable retry. This annotation is applied over a configuration class or you can also apply it over the main class to inform Spring Boot that this application contains retry logic. Second annotation is retryable. This annotation is applied over the code we want to execute multiple times in case of error. It has a lot of customizable options. So we can define the number of retries, interval between retries, increase the interval between retries and much more. We will look at these options once we understand its usage. There is a third annotation, recover. Its use we will understand later in this video after some practical hands-on. Let's get started. First place enable retry annotation over main class the one which has Spring Boot application annotation. Move to the class we just created where the code we want to retry is there. Add retryable over this class and also mark it with component annotation so that it becomes a Spring managed bean. Note that we can also apply retryable over a method. Since we applied it over the class, it means that all the methods in this class will execute in retry mode. Now, we don't need this for loop and try catch anymore. By default, it will retry for three times with a delay of one second between each retry. Let's print a message at the beginning of this method. Back to main class. Get an object of the class we just created using Spring's application context. Call the method with retry. Start the application. Look. It tried to execute the method three times and threw exception the final or third time. The delay between consecutive executions was one second. Now let's look at customizing retries. First, move this annotation from class to the method so that only this method performs retries. This annotation has many options which can be used to customize the behavior. 
I will cover the most commonly used, but you can always peek inside the code to learn other options as well. First option is to change the number of retries using its max attempts attribute. Default is 3. You can see here. Let's make it 5. Restart the application. Look, it retried for 5 times. Next is the interval between the retry executions. To customize it, we need to use its back off option. Back off option accepts another annotation which is back off. To use an annotation inside another, we need to again use its name with the add the read symbol. Back off option to change the interval is delay. Default is 1000 millisecond or 1 second. Let's make it 2 seconds. Restart. Look, the interval has increased to 2 seconds. Suppose we want to increase the interval dynamically after each retry. That is, wait for 2 seconds after first, 4 seconds after second and so on. We have a multiplier option for that which calculates the next delay by multiplying its value with delay value. So, let's assign the multiplier to 2. In this case, the delay will keep on increasing by 2 times after every retry. Start. Look, the interval is continuously increasing. Suppose you want to retry only when there is a connection issue or some particular exception type that might be corrected if retried. So, you can also define the exception type for which this method must be executed again. This exception can be defined using retry for option. Here, you can provide an array of exceptions. Let us provide no such element exception here. We know that this exception will not be raised in our case. Restart. Look, it did not retry and this is because we configured it to retry only when this exception is thrown. If this option is not provided, then it retries for all exceptions. Similarly, you can also exclude some particular exceptions for which retry does not happen. There are many other useful customizable options that you can explore. Also, all these values can be configured from external properties. Add a comment if you want me to cover it as well and I'll record another video for the same. Let's look at another important feature of Spring Retry, the recovery. It might happen that even after all the retries, the method doesn't run successfully, such as in our case today. What next? We may want to take some remedial actions such as logging the failure in log file or send an email to the support team, etc. There is another annotation, recover, which is applied over a method that is executed if even after retries, the method with retriable throws an exception. Let's create a method, name it log, print a message and add recover annotation over it. Remove back off options so that it doesn't take much time and change retry count to 3. Start the application. Look, after the retries, it executed the recovery method. We can also access the exception object so that we can get the failure reason in the recover method. Simply add the exception type as a parameter. Let's print exception message. Start the application. Look, after retries, it printed the exception. You can also add parameters to the recover method. These parameters are populated in the same order as the arguments of the failed method. Finally, you can also provide the name of recovery method along with retriable annotation with its recovery option. That is all on Spring Retry. For any doubts, place those in the comment box. If the video was useful, then do like it and share with others. Thanks for watching.